This is the Focus Group. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. With Tim Bennett. Fuck her up, Buttercup. And John Nash. We never give up. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Who knew business talk could be so much fun? Good afternoon and welcome to the Focus Group. I'm John Nash. And as always, I'm joined by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Tim Bennett. Hello. We're all business except when we're not, and you can find us here every Wednesday live on Facebook or YouTube at 1 p.m. East. If you missed the show or you want to catch us again, of course, the uh, the YouTube and the Facebook have both those uh, those video options, and focusgroupradio.com is where you want to go to find out all the platforms we're on, iTunes, SoundCloud, etc. Is that a new shirt? Oh, man, this is a brand new shirt. How do I look? Okay, it's... Kind of blue. This is a Paul and Mass kind of shirt. So months ago when we began on video... Are you sure? Paul said you need bold colors, solid bold. What did he tell you? I No, I've told you that for years. Because <laughs> you used to wear little lavenders and these no, other colors. I think colors. I look better in these... I've told you that for years, but even you would wear... I would tell you to get a blue blazer, and you would come in a camel blazer. <laughs> I, like I think your mother must have told you to wear camel. Camel's a classic. <laughs> So, I'm glad you're wearing dark uh, well, thank clothes. you. Yeah, so this is a new one. I, Penguin, it's like one of the Munsingwear guys. I love their clothes. They fit. You, you, are you like me? Like, so I'll find a brand, like a shirt brand or something, and if it fits, I can buy it online. I don't have to. I know what I'm buying, so I know I'm buying. Well, it. this shirt has got to be that I have on. Must be thirty years old. No, it looks brand new. Well, it's one of the original. Banana Republic shirts when they were still selling safari wear, and then when they still sold clothing, they closing the buttons didn't now. break and the whole deal. So it, it's <laughs> but it's a little it's a little it's a little deal. bright for I usually wear dark colors, but I thought you look good. It's kind of that tatter soul. Is that what they See, call it? You, that you actually get tan too. I, I'm Casper the Friendly Ghost, so that's why well, you know you put you put on that on me. you put on that paste on your face. What is it? SPF 60 or 50. Something? You can never go wrong with 50 or 55. I'll, I'll look great when I'm 90, but I'm not going to have a tan. So there you go. Hey, you don't have any wrinkles. I mean, no wrinkles. What do we have going on on the show today? So on the show today, aside from our usual antics, we have a guest joining us, James Navarrete, from a website called The G Life, which uh, I don't want to say it wrong. I don't, you might have it in front of you, but you, I want to give it the exact, the exact uh, description. It's the premier luxury lifestyle site for the well-rounded gay man. And that's who we talk to every week, right? Right. So, so perhaps you could get, there. I wonder if your shirt's going to be featured on this. Oh, I, I think this is a lower end. I think Penguin might be a little, it's a below boss. And <laughs> we knows, have a fun right? business birthday, and then we've got a, a shop talk, shop which talk. you found. And the shop talk is interesting. It's about... Uh, Gay bars. Right. And it focuses on the Abbey in Los Angeles, which is now the uh, subject of a TV show on E. Have you watched it? I have, yeah. Painful. It's the usual drama of the go-go boys having fights with each other because they're actually dating... It's another matter. Did you entirely. date a go-go boy? I love go-go boys, but I'm not going to date him. No, would you? Oh, sure. I mean, whatever the person does professionally, that's fine. But I, I love you. You know, I mean, like I got transfixed by go-go. I don't. Right, know. I gave you two dollar bills when we were at the Abbey. <laughs> that was it. You gave them to the strippers. And, I, and he takes my hand. He puts it right on his chest. Okay he goes, you it. got a lucky bill. You get to touch me. I'm like, okay. Hey, yep. before we go too much down the show road, um, this week uh, we saw the death of one of my favorite character actors, Martin Landau. And I'm not going to do a whole... I thought you were going to say Trump Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Donny Gate. Donny Gate, whatever, 1.02. Uh, before you go down that road, I was going to say, I heard this on the radio coming in. You might have heard it. One of the commentators on MSNBC said that that meeting that Trump Jr. had, which had initially three people, four it's up people. To eight. They said it's it's like the bar scene in Star Wars. <laughs> All the characters that showed up. Did they say yeah. that? They said it's just said this this meeting's turned into the bar scene in Star Wars. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty I accurate. Would, I thought you would have liked that. So anyway, yeah. Marlon Lando passed away at the age of eighty nine this past week and uh, people know him from different things, but here's how I knew Martin Lando. When I was growing up, there was a, uh, a British TV series. It was syndicated by the time I was. That was kid. Walter Matthau. That's Martin Landau. Yeah, dun, dun dun dun. ITC Entertainment. Anyway, it was called Space 1999. The premise was that we stored nuclear waste on the moon. It blows up and it blows the moon out of orbit, and the, the moon travels through the galaxy, which is all so completely far fetched. But hey. So at the time, Martin Landau was married to Barbara Bain, who was his co-star in this show. 
And it was only years later that I realized he was in Mission Impossible. He was all, on all these TV shows. He showed up in some of my favorite movies, including Woody Allen's um, Crimes and Misdemeanors, where he plays a very successful dentist. Um, but sadly, he passed away. Long life. 89 is not a bad, bad age, huh? It's I mean, like a North Korean you know, field guidance jacket <laughs> he has on. How old was this movie? This show was done in, hey guys, in the, and by the way, welcome to our producers. Uh, we have John and we have Garrett and behind them we have Allie and Garrett's got a John fresh got a new haircut. No, it's Garrett's oh, got, Garrett got the haircut. haircut. I notice haircuts, Garrett, because I don't have hair. I notice when someone gets a haircut. Um, uh, guys, do you remember when Space 1999 was? Was that like the late 80s, perhaps? It says uh, originally 75 to 77. Oh! Well, we got it here in the U.S. sometime around after Star Wars, yeah, 78, 79. So I just, that, I just wanted to let you know that that's how my brain thinks. Martin Landau. I Is there any science fiction you've watched that you don't like? Well, Space 1999 was not really a good show. But I just but you would you'll watch anything. I'll, you, sure, you, you, I'll with, watch with a drool it. cup. I've seen you with get transfixed on these things with like drool coming out of your mouth. You, you watch this science fiction nonsense. I would turn it off right away if it didn't excite me. Um, look, you stick with it. You, I have I have been often surprised by what you like. Okay, so in the sci-fi <laughs> point, in the sci-fi point, sci-fi realm. There you go. In the sci-fi realm, Planet of the Apes. I didn't know that was sci-fi. Classic. Classic science I think that's fiction. plausible. <laughs> I think that's plausible. Okay. That's more realistic than... And then I've around. said this story before. Nobody eats in space. You've probably heard this story before. It's like when you came up to visit us once upstate, we're like, let's show Tim Gray Gardens. And we thought that you were going to be like, click this thing off. You oh, no, were that at was the my edge life. of the couch for the entire movie. No one else we knew had sat through that film on first viewing and immediately fell in love with it. So, so you don't know. You're always a surprise. So sometimes, you know, sign, I know you didn't like American Beauty. We're not going to go down that. Absolutely. Well, that and The English Patient may have been the two worst I movies hated, ever made. I hated The English Patient. Everybody's going on. Do you see The English Patient? Yes. Did you like it? No. I still don't understand American Beauty. That's because you only saw seven minutes of it. If you see the beginning and the end. Well, you know what? I will say, we'll watch it again. <laughs> oh, you're not going to watch it again. <laughs> All right, what caught your eye this week, Mr. Bennett? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. Well, John, this one was for you. There was a few things that caught my eye this week, but this one I thought really, and you did a Lego story last week. Mm, yeah. So this is about a Lego-themed restaurant that serves edible Lego burgers. <laughs> I saw the pictures, and I was immediately transfixed. By so this is the next, Where is this? This is the next level of the Lego obsession. This is in the Philippines, and it's first of its kind. It's called the Brick Burger. And uh, they, so they made the bun look like, uh, okay. Looks like a, a Lego, Lego brick, piece. Yeah. Right. And so they said since Legos were developed in 1949, uh, the Danish carpenter Ole Kirk Christensen invented Legos. He said they've always been a choking hazard for children. They're always trying to get people not to put them in their mouths and not to choking eat them. Hazard for and um, you're not supposed to eat them. And it even says so on the box. So they said the fact that they've done this that are allowing kids to eat this stuff now. They, yeah. they think it's it's gonna confuse kids because, so how the restaurant is set up, they've got 10 different burgers and uh, you, they're named after some of the Lego characters from the movie of 2014. The Lego movie, yeah. Right, the Lego movie. So there's one called the Emmet, which is a standard burger. There's Wild Style, which comes with a spicy sauce. There's Nacho Tuesday, which is a reference to Taco Tuesday jokes. There's a Darth Burger, which is pictured, that's the black one. And that one's, Darth Vader. that one's got caramelized onions, bacon, mushrooms, garlic in it. And a dose of the dark side. And right. And they also say, and they also have done desserts. So the Sundays feature edible bricks that look like, um, so that's, if you're candy watching candy online, stuff, yeah, if yeah. you're watching online, they're showing the exterior of the store. And, uh, but they've got some bricks, brick candies that they have that they put into the desserts. If you're not into the whole Lego theme, they also have wings and hot dogs, pasta and other things that aren't Lego related, but the whole store is set up like a Lego store. I think it looks great. At, I love the placemats. If you look at the placemats there, it's like the <laughs> Lego board. And they've got all kinds of toys and things. And then the, the, the final picture I figured you would please yourself with 
it's uh, on the the next slide or the next picture is uh, <laughs> John Nash enjoying a Lego burger, Lego burger. for Comic Con, which is My kicking title off of this week. In San I figured Diego, that you'd right? be pleasuring yourself with this. Can you imagine all your things in one spot, John? Including having a burger. Darth Vader's having a burger in a Lego store. And and you didn't even know this, but one of my favorite Star Wars vehicles is right next to him. So he's even it's gets the, better. It's called the At At. The and it looks like he's drinking a vodka cranberry, tank. doesn't it? Looks like he's got it a vodka cranberry. Does have a vodka cranberry? One of my favorite drinks. The Darth Vader burger. <laughs> the only thing I thought about this place that I wasn't so sure about was the, uh, aside from the whole kitschiness of it, was the, the colors of the rolls. Those bright red, yeah, orange, that must and be black. Some dye, right? It's all dyed. And I'm just wondering. I don't know. I don't want to eat blue food or that sort of thing. Do you? You know, visually, it has to appeal, and if it doesn't, if it looks funny. Like that orange one. I, I mean, that's okay. The yellow one I can get like, away with. It's like a sourdough yeah. kind of bread. But And uh, the, and the, I guess the Darth Vader burger could be like a pumpernickel or a dark rye. Right, but they say, they're, they say they're good. It's a hit. Um, and they, Lego Corporate, they said, is on board, maybe. And the only thing that they've done is they created a couple emojis maybe. in response to the tweet. Maybe. Maybe. Well, this is the Philippines, right? So they're like the Chinese. You get away with all kinds of, right? You're not, you don't have to the worry term, about. The term copyright. Copyright trade. Literally means copy it correctly. Right. <laughs> so that's what called my, I was a Lego themed restaurant that serves edible Lego burgers in the Philippines. We both had a very funny, I love that, by the way. Thank you. Um, and it's a, I, it does follow on last week's Lego stories, the two stories. The second one that you had brought about the guy that bought four metric tons. Of Legos. Four, that, you know, that's 4,000 pounds of, like, Lego. That's, and, and, oh. Anyway. And eBay. Already bought so what pounds. caught my eye was a blast from the past. Uh, and if you survived the 80s and 90s and you were getting online, then you would definitely know about America Online and how they used to send out in magazines and direct mail a CD-ROM. And the CD-ROM you'd put in your computer and it would, it would walk <laughs> you through getting online, you get like 100 hours free, whatever. So the, uh, uh, we're, John just put up on the, if you're watching on video, one of the first CDs just included a picture of that AOL guy. But then they started doing AOL discs that were branded for other partners, like Mad Magazine. I think it's a Mad Magazine right. disc right there. So Did you use those discs? No, no, I used to download the software, but this is for this is enticing people to target here. Here's the one, I, the one on the right I love. It says explore for uh, explore for fifty hours free. Could you imagine the marketing meeting where someone goes, "We can't use that. That's in that's Indiana Jones." And well, then someone says, "Kind of right." And then someone really says, "No, like that's them. Tom Jones. That's or, or Peter Jones, his brother, who didn't explore till later in life. The younger brother of Indiana. That's how they get away with that crap. But they made it look like yeah. Indiana well, Jones. That's like what Subaru used Crocodile Dundee. D <laughs> it wasn't him. That's funny. So. Um, I always wondered, so I was late to the computer game. You gave me my, you actually gave me my very first computer for a housewarming gift. It was the, like 2002. the jelly, the right. jelly bean kind of iMac. I remember that. And yeah. so, and they were just getting away from all the, the disc thing. But I used to always see that in magazines or stuff. And I, I never understood what you would do with it. So how did it work? You pop it in. Uh, so you, you popped it you in. You run a software. It would install the dial up. It was it, the disc had barely any data on it because all you were installing was the software that allowed you to beep 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 beep. Shh, remember oh, that my, noise yeah. it would make when it did the. Uh, so that's what it was, and they would sometimes include songs to get like from from partners and stuff. But as marketers, this part killed me. There are a couple things. For some time, half of all half of all CDs manufactured in the world had an AOL logo on them. Half of all CD-ROMs manufactured really? had this stuff. And then years later, they talked to Steve Case, who was the original founder and, and uh, the guy that started AOL, about how much those discs actually cost. So I guess, so what year was, did they tell you a price? They do, in fact. Per disc? They, they talk, yes, they talk about the cost of acquisition per customer. And this was 19... Yeah, let's say this is the 90s. 90s. Yeah, 90, let's say 94. I'll say $1.50. Oh, you're, you're, you get to weigh up that. This is what shocked me. All right, he claimed that he had, he said that he wasn't sure what the, what the total cost was, but the goal was that you would get a subscriber. The average time they stayed on the network was 25 months, which is about 350 bucks in revenue. Case estimated the company spent 35 per user on marketing material to get one person. So 
Talk about a cost of acquisition. How'd you miss that account? <laughs> hey, we try, we try with Earthlink used to Did do you? the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, um, but God, the $35 a person for acquisition? Cost of acquisition. That's a lot now. You would never allow that. If I, if I had come to you as an agency guy and I said, Tim, I got this great idea. Ten cents. You, you would say 35 You know, you could do that. You might as well go hand out dollar bills at the mall. Fives, <laughs> hand out fives, right? So, that uh, that's what caught my eye. The so, by the way, if you want to check out more of the discs, and there are tons of them, there's a website called the Internet Archive, and there's a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, they've had some old Macintosh '80s games, and the guy that runs the Internet Archive has put out the call that if you have these AOL CDs, he would like you to send them in, and he's going to photograph them, archive them. Will he give us money for them? I probably have some send in the box. Send them for free. But some people don't like parting with the discs because they think it's a piece of history they have to keep. We threw this stuff away. Yeah, this, is, this is garbage. Or so coasters. Use them as coasters. So um, before we move forward, we have a caller, Billy in New York. Do you have, do you have something to say to us? Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, boys. Oh. I, I think some psychological counseling is in order for today. Uh-oh, why? Uh -oh. We're going to get you both on the couch. You're having disc withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> I took my AOL disc, and I, they make great mobiles. Yeah, I, that's how many I had. Did you do it with a hanger? Well, you know, spread hot glue, scare the birds away. What can you do with them? Hot glue. <laughs> hot glue. Well, you know, fishing line, and then you put them on and a they, hanger. And then they shine, and one side sparkles, right? It's very Martha yeah. Stewart of you. Or what was, that, what was the gay guy that used to have that craft show that used to be on? There was a, there was a guy named Mark Heskin here in New York, but the year it was, it was the, the guy the with the guy beard. With the beard yeah. And, yeah. Well, and, we could believe it's the moon and it blows up and goes across the galaxy and has some shape changing alien inside of it, but whatever. Which means you watch yeah, Space 199. for you. Yeah, you, you know, Billy, so do you remember her name? Oh, man, I, can, I can't remember the actress's name. Was it possibly, she, was, she was, was her character's name Maya or something? Yeah, it was Maya, but yeah. I don't remember the actress. And she was a shapeshifter, yeah. Yeah, but when she changed into a plant to save everybody, I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it was only after she changed into a plant that Billy said, I'm out. <laughs> this is Jump the Shark. You guys sat and watched this nonsense. It was you well. Wa wait a minute. You watch apes that want to take over the world. That's I plausible. I into that. Now, I like the monsters, Tim. <laughs> I do like the monsters. But, but the apes, I don't know. And I like the monsters more than I liked Adam's family. Oh, yeah, well, so. that's a given. What, um, so, is that all you wanted to do, is yell no, at us no, about... No, no, I wanted to ask him, he was mentioned a couple weeks ago about the Volkswagen Tiguan and the new 2018 model. Mm. I am ready to shoot my Cherokee. Really? Well, the, the, it should be on sale, I would say, I, I don't know for sure, but definitely by the end of summer. Yeah. And, um... It's, uh, it's a nice car. It's a handsome car. In its class, we hear it's going to be probably the largest. So if you were comparing it against a Cherokee or a Forester or a CRV, RAV4, those sort of things, it's going to be the largest of, of that group. Have great gas mileage. And it is a handsome looking, handsome looking car. It's probably going to be my next car. The, the, the Tiguan, not the yeah, Atlas. The Tiguan. Yeah. Atlas, Atlas for me is too big, but for some people with families that need a seven-passenger car, it's, it's perfect. But for me, it's well, too I big. I don't have dogs driving it like Subaru right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I put my dogs in the back of the Alltrack every weekend. They like it. We, we, go, we go down to the beach. Yeah, but the Alltrack's been a great car. And I know that when Tim saw the newly redesigned Tiguan, and, you know, Billy, the funny thing about the Tiguan is that the current styling, they're keeping that version, and they're calling it the Tiguan Legacy or yeah. something, because so many people like, like that, like a classic version. But the new one is one that I really like myself. All right. Well, Tim, when you uh, do a review, I, I will be paying attention. All right. Well, we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, well, Philly. Let's go down to Alabama and welcome Don. Hey, Don, we haven't talked to you in quite a while, my friend. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing well. I was actually in France working on a project. France. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Are you uh, yeah. in this in one of a major city? Or are you down south? Or uh, it's uh, uh, it's actually up on the coast, uh, Ch uh, Chateau de Normandy. Oh sure. World okay. War One exhibit. Wow. So very cool. Yep, yeah, they're refurbing that. But no, uh, today is a little little recognized milestone in space history. Uh, the U.S. attempted the first launch from Cape Canaveral of a V-2 rocket. Wow. All right, so, Don, would, that, would that be 1950? Yeah, it, would, it was 
1950. Yeah, 1950. It was straight up 1950. So this is after the U.S. rescued Werner von Braun, yes. right, from yeah. German Braun, clutches. Yeah, the Cinnamundu group were at, were at Cape Canaveral, and they had built a V-2, or actually they had reassembled a V-2 from harvested parts and a few new pieces, and it was the first attempted launch of a U.S. in the United States of a uh, what, what is, would be called a classified as a ballistic missile. So did, did it succeed? I don't know what the North Koreans are doing now. They're succeeding. Though. Did, so, did, was <laughs> yes. it a successful launch for the for the uh, first launch? Was a, first attempt was a scrub. Second attempt, uh, it went off, but it had a uh, engine failure. You know, Donna, I was just thinking about you because I read an article, um, and I was going to circle back with you offline about Jeff Bezos and why he selected Alabama to do a lot of the rocket construction engine for. I think he's is he's Blue Origin, right? Right, he's Blue Origin. And so apparently, uh, because Rocket City, Alabama has a lot of technical know-how, a lot of great engineers like Don down there, he selected that place to to build the engines for his future rockets, which I think is kind of cool. Cheap labor in Alabama. Well, I would I don't know if it's cheap, but I would say it's known labor. They know it. They're they're skilled, skilled, skilled labor. labor. There you go. Hey, um, it's, the high, it's the second highest concentration of PhDs in the country, and there are. Six rocket engine systems manufacturers within 15 miles of where I'm sitting. Six. Oh, well, wow. Mercedes yeah. has their plant down there. Yeah. Hey, quick yeah, question for you: Are you um, are you near the Amer are you working on the American monument, or is are you near the Canadian monument for World War One? No, it's it's the it's a uh, the, I don't know the French or way of saying this, but it's the French Bureau of Antiquities. Okay. That's working in conjunction with the United Nations to revitalize uh, an exhibit on World War One. Because I was going to say, my great uncle was killed on the battlefield field there, and he's, his name's listed on the Canadian Memorial. So I was going to ask you to get a picture for me. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, but you're not I, near there. When I go back. I'll be in that neighborhood. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a private note. But thanks for calling. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thanks. Don. Business birthday. Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings. But the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. So we, um, this only happens once in a while. I guess it's never happened before. I would say once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Because of the way the dates Because of the dates and, and, yeah. and when our show broadcasts live. But today, the business birthday, we're celebrating the birthday of Timothy Mahoney. Was born today, July 19th. He's 61 today. Going to kill me for saying it. Ah, look at He's 61 today. He's the chief marketing officer of Global Chevrolet and marketing operations leader at General Motors. So he controls all of the marketing dollars and advertising dollars essentially globally for General Motors, which is a pretty big job. And uh, he's called into the show before. He's been a guest, but he also has called in to, uh, to school us a couple of mm -hmm. times where John and I would go down a road. But <laughs> um, in the spirit of transparency, that's Tim in his younger years with myself. You'll recognize me, young Tim. And uh, Mary Treisbach, Trisha Cuddy, Richard Marshall, Carolyn Coyle. Carolyn Coyle, right. Coyle. And Richard Mar that's okay. That was the launch of the Rainbow Card at the Rainbow Room. So Tim uh, was my boss at Subaru. And uh, I would say a mentor and, and more importantly, a good friend. And John and I both worked with Tim uh, during our, day, our days at Subaru. And Tim really was the person who... Um, I guess supported or pushed the the advocacy for the LGBT consumer. Yeah, and he did it in super smart ways. Research, 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 campaign, yep. tweak, internal support. Yep. And he and the other woman that was in that picture, Mary, they were the two people responsible for really I would say saving Subaru, that people won't give them enough credit, but they were the research people that decided to change the brand to go to all-wheel drive, 100% all-wheel drive, based upon all the research that they did, and uh, really did save the brand and then the development of the Outback. Tim was then recruited to Porsche, and part of his job was uh, to launch the Porsche Cayenne. New Cayenne, I remember the Cayenne. And yeah. because that was an SUV, the first yeah. SUV for Porsche, and then he also launched the very first four-door uh, car at Porsche as well. Of course, the name escapes me. And I forget what that was, the, the long car. I can't believe I forgot it. And then he had uh, gone back to Subaru and uh, got away from all the craziness from when I was there. So he and I overlapped a little bit, but I had left and then he had come back. Yep. And uh, Subaru stopped selling equal length drive shafts and horizontally opposed engines and started the love campaign. 
and John and his agency were, uh, were part of that um, success as well. And then from there, he was recruited to Volkswagen. We actually, which ironically, we were overlapped there because yeah. John and I had left uh, Subaru, had stopped supporting the focus group, and Volkswagen had picked us up. And Tim was one of the people responsible for uh, the Star Wars commercials that were so successful, as well as helping um, push them to the direction of doing all wheel drive wagons, which is the all track is, is, which is now we're driving, that. yeah. And now he's at General Motors, where he's in charge of the, the shebang there at Chevrolet and GM globally. And uh, has been a great friend to us, a great mentor to us. Probably one of the best best bosses I've had. I would say he and Mary in that picture are probably two of the best. And smart guy. And you said this at lunch that I was so looking when Tim built this into the deck. I'm looking right at Tim Mahoney saying, "Happy birthday! You're a super cool guy." As an agency person, I will tell you that in in business, we we get to work with a lot of cool people. Some, some great, some not so great, but most people are, have a lot of fun and they bring their best selves to work. As a boss, he was fantastic to you. As an outside guy, for me as an agency owner, he was the rare client who gave us room to create and room to make mistakes and room to come up with a good idea. So if I came with, with an okay idea, he, it's, it's like the chef in the kitchen who throws a little dash of something in, asks the question you weren't asking yourself, you feel a little bit weak. You're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make Tim happy. <laughs> and then you came up with the right campaign. And that's a very, very rare quality to have. And I will say one other thing about uh, Tim. I could say a lot of things. But do you remember Auto Show? I don't remember what year it was. Auto Show sometime in the 90s or the early 2000s, probably the 90s. We, you guys were staying at the Millennium Hotel. Yep. And traditionally when Subaru came into town, they always made a point of inviting partners and agency friends to join them after some of the festivities and the and the product rollouts and we were at the bar and you and me and tim were having kind of this fun we're surrounded by people we're having a private-ish conversation and we were talking about life and about success and whatever and and tim mahoney uh taught me a lesson that i've still used to this day and i think we both talk about this and it's the following he said you know I don't have to be the most successful person. I don't have to make the most money, but I do want to do these five things. And he had a, he had like, he said, if I had a, a card with five bullet points, these are the five things. And I said, what are they? And he listed them and they were achievable goals. Right. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I want to teach. And, and it was a really great life lesson because we don't have to start company, you know, it was just a super cool thing. So uh, thank you for that, Tim, and thank you for being an incredible person to work with when we had the opportunity over at Subaru and at Volkswagen. So it's, well, a, I, it's I was, a great birthday. I was called Young Tim, and he was Old Tim. <laughs> and the, the one thing I hated about Tim that I loved about Tim was he really was the smartest person in the he room, really was. as much as I would think I was, or somebody else might be. But he always asked the question you might not have thought about or – that would pull it all together and it was always that very simple thing so um that was but he a made you feel all right so uh tim alluded to the fact that when tim came not alluded you talked about it, when he came back to subaru yep um he gave us the creative assignment to relaunch the wrx which was a tuner car and we had presented a campaign and it was all about the origins of the car had a japanese flair to it and we we referenced any may and all this cool stuff he sits through the presentation. Now, everybody in the room, you all knew how he was. We all knew how he was. So I was dead sure I had thought of every single question that he could ask. And so the, the room's dark. It's like one of those glass conference rooms. I finished the presentation, and Tim sits there, and he's doing this, one of these things. <laughs> and he was at the head. He was literally like a movie. He was at the head of a conference table. And he leans forward in the chair, and the chair makes that little squeak sound, like, yee! And, and he said, hey, what about da, 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 da? Oh. Greg, Greg and I, I, I busted out laughing, and I literally walked to the side of the room, and I came back, and I said, I, because we all knew each other, and I said, I'm so sorry. I thought of everything except that. And I think Karen was in the room, and Karen goes, he got gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, that's a, he, but he did it in the right way because yeah. he, he wanted great work from the people he worked with and he knew how to get a, make us give the best job we could do. So When he was mad at you, he gave you the silent treatment. <laughs> he didn't talk to me for two weeks once. I did something. Silent I was treatment. disrespectful at work. But anyway, happy birthday, Tim. Happy birthday, Tim. <laughs>
All right. That's a pleasure. That business birthday is a fantastic. Yeah, it was great that it fell on. It fell on. I hope everybody has a good learning moment from that because Tim was a is a fantastic guy. Hey, everybody. Um, Deep Discount is a partner of ours on the Focus Group. They're an amazing partner. I'm going to tell you a really quick, quick, short story as to why they're so amazing. Last week, Tim and I, with Garrett and John and Allie, recorded a promo that Deep Discount was going to show to something called LAES. Now, I never really paid attention to the fact that it was Los Angeles Entertainment Summit or something, and we thought the thing was taking place in Las Vegas. We do this great promo. Tim and I talk about the Tiki Room, about the Neon Museum. We send it off. Our reps that work with us said, A++, can't wait for Deep Discount to see it. Deep Discount sees it, calls up the rep and says, these guys are fantastic. And if we ever do a show in Vegas, this is the promo we'll run. (laughs) And I still want to know how we got Las Vegas. Did you just think Vegas? I I think I... Because I I looked it up and it said Los Los Angeles. Angeles. Hey, John, could you believe that? I looked it up and I said, oh, it's a Los Angeles film. I had no idea. That's crazy. I was like, why are they in Las Vegas? John's like, oh, no, Vegas. We're going to do a museum, Tiki Lounge. We love Deep Discount so much. We're going to give them a promo. They'll never forget. Big promo. She said, that'd be great if we were going to Vegas. They didn't want people to go to the Strip. Yo, 11, do hit the roulette wheel. <laughs> We're laughing with Allie was just back from Vegas. Yeah. We're like, oh, my God. So that's why they're a cool partner, because Deep, Deep Discount loved the promo. I was able to edit it. Guys, I don't know how I did this, but I was able to edit it. And there's only one portion that looks like my mouth is not matching the words, but it's OK. It's kind of OK. And they gave us a thumbs up. They're like, it's fine. We'll run with it. Thanks for all your help. So at least we got an A for effort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but this week at Deep Discount, um, Tim said, John, this is going to be your thing because they have over 400 sci-fi movies on sale, sci-fi and As if TV we haven't shows. talked enough sci-fi yet today. Yay! So Yuck. I chose, I stuck with the sale pages. So if you go to deepdiscount.com and you, and you go to the sci-fi movie sale site, um, I stuck with this, the, what was on the page, meaning I went, I went through every page and I found some great stuff. The first is a TV show I highly recommend. Um, it's called The 4400, The Complete Series. I think it was like three seasons long. The premise is that for years, people have been disappearing, like in the Bermuda Triangle, that kind of thing. But everybody that disappeared over a certain period of time reappears on Earth in one day, all 4400 of them. Sounds like Jehovah's Witnesses. And, yeah. <laughs> Tim's take on sci-fi. And uh, the government wants to know why, and there is a reason why, and it's pretty cool. Uh, you know who turned me on to this show? Mr. Paul Hagen. So Paul Hagen came in one day to the Focus Group broadcast, and he recommended this. I, I, I thought it was really a fun, fun show. Next. It only lasted, okay, three seasons next. Oh, my God. A great, great movie um, starring Sigourney Weaver and Tim Allen, and I think a lot of people have seen it, and also Alan Rickman as Dr. Lazarus, is a movie called Galaxy Quest, which is a comedic riff on like a Star Trek kind of thing where what happens to these actors on a TV show that goes and goes and goes and they're canceled and then it's a really funny movie. I remember seeing it at a movie theater in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I was on a um, a freelance... Weaver looks like Goldie Hawn there. She does, yeah. (laughs) I was on a freelance gig and uh, Greg and I were the only two people in the movie theater midweek seeing the movie. You're kidding! (laughs) Listen to Tim! (laughs) My God. Galaxy Quest! Okay, and last but not least, uh, I selected this movie because in a week or so, uh, his new movie comes out, and it's from director Luc Besson, and it's The Fifth Element. Now, The Fifth Element is a movie that um, starred Bruce Willis, came out uh, years ago. It's actually a cult classic. I like the movie. I think it's a lot of fun. It looks fantastic in Blu-ray. The visuals are amazing. Um, Luc Besson, the director, is now releasing a movie called Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. So far, the reviews have been iffy, but Fifth Element is a solid bet. So there's my picks from the fantastic deep discount 400 plus sci-fi movie and TV sales. Well, keep it in mind if I need coasters. <laughs> I'll get over the deep discount site and get myself some sci-fi <laughs> on the pages. There's also, as you know, uh, every week they they uh, release some new movies uh, as well. And this week, it's a remake of Beaches. Now you remember Beaches with with Bette Midler. Midler, yeah. But this is uh, this actually has Adina Menzel and Nia Long in it, and uh, it's actually 30 minutes shorter than the original uh, movie, and which was. Uh, 
which came out in 1988. And uh, Dina Menzel, of course, was the voice in Frozen, uh, the singer. Oh, yeah. So she okay. does a lot of the singing. She does Wing, uh, wing Beneath My uh, Wings. Wind Beneath My Wind, Wings. What did I say? Wings. Wind Beneath My Wings. And uh, it's funny because they said as they had to redo this uh, remake, in the original movie they wrote letters back and forth to That's one right. another. Well, now you don't have to. So they could update it, which is probably why it's 30 minutes shorter. <laughs> So you can just text and um, sorry, you know, text and email now, so you don't have to wait for the snail mail. <laughs> they said the other thing was diversity wasn't an issue, so obviously it's a diverse cast, which uh, the original Beaches wasn't. And they said that they didn't even feel that they needed to address it; that it was just part of part of life. But uh, they asked um, they asked Adina uh, Menzel about it. Her her take on the whole movie was: she said it's for today's young women. She said remakes. For any diehard fan, remakes are people are skeptical of them. She said, but everybody should see the original Beaches. She acknowledged, however, that so many young girls don't know what Beaches it is, is yeah. because of because it was 30 years ago. She said it will always be relevant no matter who's making it. This is really a film about friendship, sisterhood, and girl power. So uh, be sure to pick up your copy of Beaches at uh, deepdiscount.com. The best way to find any of these movies or any of the thousands of items that they have on on, uh, on the website is to go to focusgroupradio.com because we get credit for it. So we're going we're gonna to shill it. And thanks, Deep Discount. There you go. And that got saved for the Vegas yeah, we, slash L.A. promo. That made too. it. <laughs> that made it. <laughs> so, hey, it's the Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash. We're all business except when we're not. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got James Navarrete joining us who's going to talk to us about his website, The G Life. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. Anybody who asks, you know, you tell them you race BMX, they're like, oh, you do backflips? It's not that at all. That's not what we do. We're basically a motocross race on kids' bikes. I love it. I just feel like it's, it's made me who I am. I can't picture a day without riding my bike. It's just it's like a day without brushing your teeth. Like, you just got to do it, you know? BMX is definitely an adrenaline junkie aggressive sport. You, you're out there with seven other people. There's no lines or boundaries. There's contact. There's big jumps, high speed. We are hitting 40 miles an hour at the bottom of the hill and you're jumping a 40 foot gap. It's scary enough by yourself, but you have seven other people around you. This is a contact sport. When you see us on TV, you're going to see people hitting each other in the turns or even blatantly taking each other out. You could be leading the whole time and make one mistake and the race is over. You could start when you're two years old and upwards of over 60. I know a couple of old dads or grandpas out here racing cruiser and they just do it, they love it. Definitely a wide variety family sport. A lot of people love doing it with their family. I can't even explain the feeling, you know, just sitting in the gate at practice. I got one daughter on this side, I got my other daughter on my left side. It's, you know, it's amazing, it's awesome. I mean, you can ride until you're 75. Are you gonna be riding when you're 75? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> There's just so much passion that goes into this sport. BMX means that you can be who you want to be and you can be a champion on your bike. Now, back to the Focus Group with Tim and John. Glamour today is nothing but a tight skirt, loose hips, and wet lips. An entertaining look at the world of business. Make it work. Make it work. Make it Make it. Make it work. Work. Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. John Nash here with my good friend and co-host, Tim Bennett. Who you saw first before there he is smile and tim we're in that foot. fantastic shirt from banana republic to my right stage left <laughs> is james navarette from the glife.com he also has an incredible resume stretching back many years in publishing luxury publishing lux lux the lux, lux life lux which life. i always love so welcome to the show thank you thank you for having and me and before we start uh james had a friend come by and he's been fleured f-l-e-u-r apostrophe french you guys actually Fleur is french for flower yeah 
You guys saw me get flirt, actually. What is it? Yes. It's a boutonniere. Uh, it's can made I touch by. It? Uh, you can certainly touch it. it. This one is, is it... a pan leather one, but it comes in. Canvas. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I thought it was a flower flower. It's wait, 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 not it a flower. It comes in soft flower, leather and suede. forever. Is that a boy's yes. thing? It is certainly a boy's thing, yeah. <laughs> Andrew Werner. Uh, I think I'd look like Happy the Clown with that. I think you need to get flirt is, yourself. Is Andrew the guy that came with the. It is. Yeah, he's okay. a. Why don't he flirt us? He's a. <laughs> next time, maybe he could be a guest next time. And maybe we could. Uh, and we could have promotional things like fl the boys were flirted by. He has a great website, flirt.com. Uh, he's a great photographer. He has shot for the G Life. Uh, we have a great uh, fashion uh, piece he did for the Glam Channel recently. So it's up and running now. A uh, great videographer as well. Good friend. Wow. Very fun. Well, we, we were, right before we went on, uh, James says, you know, I have a friend coming over with a boutonniere. I got pinned like I was in Well, I thought it was going to be like I a prom thing, like one of these flowers, 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 like a lily. Yeah. Or something. And so this, my wrist. This, is, this is clever yeah. because it lasts. You could yeah. actually wear that again and again, Absolutely. right? I would have done something a little darker maybe so it would have stood out. It's, uh, no, but there's, so there's kind it's of a tone accent. on tone. It's an accent. <laughs> Do, do, sure. do you agree? Is it an accent? An accent piece, yes. Yeah, yeah, accent. And then before we came on, we were talking about this Apple Watch business. Now, this mm -hmm. is the one thing. John is a huge, John is I like an Apple file. Yeah, I have everything Apple. And he, no, except the, watch. the Apple Watch. And when we started our business, he, he's, he picked, <laughs> pick, 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 Apple, Apple, Apple. iPad. I like yeah. iPad. And he would say things like, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they used their iPad. They were laying in a bed reading the iPad. <laughs> I was that's, trying to figure me. out things that he was trying to figure do, out things but... that I would do to get this iPad. So when the watch, came, I thought, oh, my God, let me see. Now we're going to have to, you know, you carve out X amount. No, he's... no, so John, of all things, and our friend Susan, who we all know, yep. that worked at Apple, has the watch. Oh, sure. And Hers is the Hermes watch, of course. Of course it is. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> all that is is the leather, right? Uh, the leather, and I think there's a little uh, logo on there yeah, as no, well. She would, yeah. she would but let me ask there. you this. We, John and I had done a, a consulting assignment out in the Midwest for, for another brand. And uh, the guys there all had the Apple Watches on. That. But the reviews were kind of eh, didn't you think? Mm. We all said they wanted to say they liked them, but so we were asking you, so what are you, are you, what are you using it for? Uh, initially, I have a beautiful doggy, Derby, uh, who I walk all the time with because I work from home and I have juggling the G life. Um, I want to make sure I don't miss an email or a text or a client a retail, you never know what the client might need at what time. Uh, so that's what I thought I'd initially use it for, which I still do, but it keeps me fit, it tracks my steps, it tracks my activity for the day, it makes me feel accomplished on a good day uh, and a slug on a bad day. Um, so, <laughs> so that's- that was surprising. That was, yeah, that was a bonus, an added bonus. I knew it was there, I didn't think I'd pay attention to it as much as I do. But do you need your phone near you for it to you work? Do uh, to get the emails and texts directly. However, if you're just doing exercises, it will still Store keep track of your um, steps and movement and heart and all that good stuff. Huh. Yeah. So what's the G life? The G life is uh, <laughs> as we as we move on, move through. <laughs> nice segue. Uh, anyway, about, uh, <clears throat> you can tell time. What's the G life all about? Well, there is a gym channel on the G life, uh, but the G life is for uh, uh, the premier luxury lifestyle website for the well-rounded gay man. Um, oh, Steve, before you yes. continue, um, often people come up with ideas and products and sites because they see a gap in the market or, or need. So you clearly saw a need for a That's particular right. type of informational portal website for the well-rounded guy. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I uh, yes, from a personal level, uh, I, I did see that need, that, that niche, that missing um, piece on the... Um, Internet, really. Uh, but maybe also I sitting across from advertisers for the last two decades, I kind of understood what they were asking mm, for, what they needed. Good point. Uh, what the point that, you know, er everything that they desired that was not available. And I thought for well, them to align their products their and their services. With, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a mix of both. Um, my personal passions uh, with my friends and and kind of uh, feeling uh, stereotyped by the different media that's out there. Good point. Uh, Very know, good point. We're more than just, you know, uh, sipping and twirling at uh, the sip and twirl. And uh, uh, there, there's just a lot more to us. I think we needed to catch up. Uh, I think that's a good fit for the focus group, too, because Tim and I often say this. Yeah. So, so is it an aggregator of 
of content or do you actually have people original. that it's actually more like 90 percent original content okay yeah and we do have a couple of uh we aggregate a, a couple of different channels like the gay channel is more um gay can mean you know a lot of things to everyone but we the way we use it is um more um keeping an eye on political news uh right now we just have a piece on what uh, brands companies are supporting us um and have supported us for the gay pride month for example um i was surprised by that list so I went through that list of the, it was the what was the top ten companies twenty five twenty five companies. Yeah. What surprised you about it? What was the? Was well, I was surprised a, that who I thought would be there was not there. Mm. So there was no Absolute, there was no Subaru, there was no American Airlines. Um, well, well, you just named what we used to call the golden brands, right? Uh, the ones that were. But the number one was Hilton Hotels. Right. Which, Hilton's been pretty which, active. That yeah. kind of surprised me. Um, I was surprised that. Uh, there were some other car brands that are doing some things. Volkswagen, of course, were their support of us. Um, was Apple on Apple there? was definitely on, we there, on yeah. there. But I, I would have thought maybe Nissan or, or Lexus or Volkswagen might have been on there as car brands. But I was who came? Was that a list from HRC? Do you know or where? Uh, I believe it was aggregated through Logo. Through Logo, okay. Yeah. I remember when Logo did that. Yeah, so that's a... Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> You're going to cough instead. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but 90% of our content is original content. We have some great video. We had a sponsored um, a video from Harry's shaving products uh, that we have on our grooming channel. Um, How does Harry... Now, you know, you've been, you've been in the sales realm for years. Yep. And if you were sitting across from somebody um, and someone said, hey... Uh, Harry's or Dollar Shave Club, do, do, are they even considered to be in the same playing field? As like uh, Harry's is a as a brand is right. they're not are they're not the lowest cost denominator are they like you know the Dollar Shave Club right. got the, you get the blade sure. but this is the same it's a blade delivery thing you get the blades all every month right. Uh, you 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 can do that. You can also buy it at Harry's Corner uh, uh, Barber in Soho, and you can also get it at Target now, oh. as well. All right, yeah. so so, but they're going and online, of course. But wh where would you put them in relation to like some of the other? Because there's a bunch of people that do the shave stuff, right? Well, a lot of people are doing that direct um, yeah. Blue Apron, for instance, with food or, mm -hmm. or some of these. Um, what is it called? Direct to consumer. Direct to, yeah, well, because we we free, we we had what was it? Total. What was the wine? Um, I can't believe I, I, I can't believe I forgot about it. they were a sponsor for years. Sorry, tastingroom. <laughs> tastingroom.com. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. Well, I keep getting right? their emails. Yeah. Their emails come in at lot eighteen, and so I get lot confused. Eight, that's right, it's tasting. But, but but the and and I think that's where you're going is how how do you differentiate one of those from another? How do you decide which one you're going to? And and, and from a brand fit for G Life. Yeah. So Harry's makes more sense for the G Life. Than the uh, Dollar Shave well, Club. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know they they maybe they're targeting our audience a little more. Uh, than other brands may. Uh, they're definitely also one of the originals where you could only get it online originally, then they branched out to Target. They are uh, now extending themselves to the UK. That's going to be a new market for them and a big market. Um, so they were kind enough to sponsor our, our video, which I think looks pretty cool. Excellent. It's available on the site as well as on our YouTube channel. So you worked in publishing for years. Years. And... Two, two decades now. So, and so this... 20 years ago, this might have been a, a magazine. Well, yeah, I don't think the right. So, but, but thing. so I was interesting idea. Yeah. Like, so what, what I what I was trying to figure out is when did when did you see from the the publishing business? I hate the word the tipping point, but when was the point where all of a sudden you you're you're doing the print stuff and you're you still have to get involved in digital? When did it just tip? where it was because isn't now mostly I still get some magazines delivered to my house, right. but. I really find myself consuming them online, even though the hardback or the, yeah. the paper comes to the house. Sure. When, that, when was that tip? When was, it was that tipping? 2008, point? to be quite honest. Uh, so you know, at that it's 2008. Yeah, and then the crash happened, and then uh, everything really swung digitally. Uh, but even the iPad, back to Apple, um, when that was first launched, and I was primarily selling print advertising, they were still they started to ask for uh, your iPad numbers, and if you're uh, print publication was available on a, a tablet form. Digital right. platform. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then that was really interesting because they, they would had print dollars and they would uh, ask for digital bonus space as their added value, uh, where now it's 
digital dollars and maybe we'll take print if we must but they wow. really it's wow. really swan so the g life no it's all digital there will now be a print uh, <laughs> uh, uh piece uh, or magazine of it i do subscribe to a couple of uh different titles still uh you know i enjoy that that form that format um uh, men's health gq uh and going back to the g life i wanted to kind of flip the switch from myself as a subscriber and I'm sure many others where they had the men's health but yet you know we'd had to suffer through how to you know uh, please your lady and you're like okay skip skip well, skip but now to the abs and the hair grooming and the food and you know, which we cover all uh it, I I would love and I had this uh, happen recently where I had a model straight model uh on the glam channel and he came to, up to me and he's like I love what you do on the site I go there for this I go there for that and it's I'm I'm flipping the switch, uh, so it's 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 you know your everyone's your welcome. Your example is a good one, by the way, because we do have the guys channel for the record, so they don't they don't need to suffer through it. They could just not click on it. That's all. I I, uh, I think it's a great uh, the men's health comparison is interesting because <laughs> I had a friend once say to me, subscribe for twelve months and you're done. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, because everything you're going to read is going to just be recycled yeah. versions of get the summer at six pack at this get this and it's interspersed with how to please your lady right and, and the weird secret was that more gay men subscribe to Absolutely. these men's health kind yeah. of books and or a gq or yeah. details oh, yeah. at the time yeah. The funny, you say that and i was laughing because um one of my assistants at subaru denise i love to death <sighs> denise and when we, when Subaru first started marketing to the LGBT consumer, we started getting all the rags. So all the magazines would come in. So I think it was out, came in, and it was how to please your man. Mm. So Denise, straight woman, she wants to try to get something going with the husband. So she's leafing through, and she comes to me. She says, you know, I'm reading in this magazine. It says that, you know, guys like to have their nipples touched, some guys. She says, is that true? I said, yeah. I said, some guys are into that. Some guys like it. She says, okay. So the next morning she comes in and she's furious with me because her, she went up to her husband and she just grabbed his nipple and she <laughs> yanked it. <laughs> and I said, Denise, where'd you? She goes, well, I was reading in that Out magazine. I said, well, <laughs> so it's the same sort of thing where, yeah. you know, I, I just, when you mentioned that about how to please I your lady, reverse. she sees you had to please your man. Well, let me see. <laughs> So anyway, it didn't that's, work. I'm sure that's a whole other audience for us as well. <laughs> so the the uh, the great thing about the G Life and about the digital platform, uh, you are able to put up all kinds of content, aka the video you did with um, Harry's, and you have one up there on Max Emerson too. Is, am I right about that? Absolutely. Um, which you can't do in print, which is kind of an interesting thing. You could have an interact like a, a great little experience, like a video or a photo thing that is just impossible in print and that's a cool well, thing uh for, yes uh for several reasons i mean max emerson when we met he had the hooked film um being released that monday uh, what after is hooked Gate about Pride. hooked is about um well it benefits the ali forney center which uh, is another um uh, in our giving channel we're, we're covering the ali forney center uh but it's basically uh teenage runaways uh that have nowhere to go uh, it's a story about one teenage individual and uh, him being kind of abused uh, while being homeless and there's drugs involved and it's it's pretty dark uh, wow. but unfortunately it's pretty real uh, at the same time or many many yeah yeah so it's it's an important uh, piece um, that said yes yeah, so so we were able to post it before the screening of the uh, movie which was a day after gay pride he happens to be an instagram uh, sensation uh, with uh, with his 165 pound 30 inch waist oh yeah, I, yeah it, Did it, I miss that i miss that on the max emerson's adorable and only 786000 followers uh, <laughs> so uh, you know that's our guys channel but but yet a, a lot of these stories do fall into different categories on our site guys obviously uh for you know the eye candy uh but also for the ali forney um Philanthropy. charity yeah. uh portion of the hooked film um so yeah i'm excited about so if you go to the glife.com then you have all the different categories the 11 different there. channels yes well yeah. actually you you made them all g so there's gay, no, there's they glam, just, they there's just good, to, yeah. giving, they, get away. There's they, yeah. gay, glam, good, giving, getaways, grooming. I, I, even though I don't use pomade anymore, we had that talk before the. Uh, um, there's gym, there's guys, there's grub. Correct. Grooms and green. Yes. So I think, and grooms is a funny one because 
Up until a few years ago, that would not necessarily have been an entry on the Absolutely. G Live site, right? Oh, I'm missing go. Go-Go, John. You can have Go-Go on there. Yeah, you know, like, go -Go like a Go-Go. Go-Go, why not? Well, there's guys is in there, so we can have Go-Go guys, go -Go. I guess. So what's your biggest challenge in launching something like this? Uh, biggest challenge, uh, I think, uh, educating the advertising community uh, and seeing us um, as an elevated brand and not a stereotypical a gay market, if you well, that, Yeah, and that's what led to my, what was going to lead to my next question. So how do you get the news out? Because obviously there's lots of people that have developed websites or different sort of lifestyle brands. And so are you contacting brands directly? Are you contacting advertisers directly? Or how are you going about Directly. I've been doing this for 20 years, so I have a lot of uh, close uh, knit ties with, uh, you know, most of the clients, some agencies, of course. Um, so every which way, I mean, through social media, uh, we, we just launched our Facebook page uh, not too long ago, Instagram. Uh, so just really getting the word out. I've been actually uh, been approached by a grooming um, uh, brand. Uh, can't, can't divulge it just yet. But uh, they found me through one of the social channels. So uh, now I'm working on a proposal. Will apparel it. companies pay? I'm sorry? Will apparel companies pay? Oh, sure. Or they just want to have their stuff shown? Uh both, okay. really, yeah. I mean, for the glam, uh, we have a couple of different glam channels, and we do have the original penguin, penguin. And, in and, one of their swimsuit pieces, <laughs> our, our print swimsuit I know, stories. I know, I think Lacoste is running, is it? Lacoste is running, running now, yeah, it's Lacoste. Nordstrom, yeah. uh, Thomas Pink. Um, so yeah, we do feature brand new designers, and we mix it with high and low. Question. <laughs> That's what we do here on The Focus. Um, did you find that the process of introducing the site and its potential to advertisers and brands easier for you after your 20 years of publishing experience? Because you kind of know the way to get into the right people to, to tell the story that needs to be told for them to say, yeah, we're on board. Yes. And, and also, it's a safe environment for them. And we're really at the G Life trying to elevate our brand as who we are uh, as an audience. Um, but yeah, going back to you know me finding that um, empty niche uh, available, and and having learned what the advertiser is looking for, it was easy to kind of connect the dots. Now you just said something that also intrigues me. I I'm a hundred percent on board with it because we deal with the same thing. But when you said a safe place for the brand, um, we talk about this all the time as well about what we do on our show, who we reach, what we talk about. In 2017, even if I went back to 15 years ago when we when you were selling some of the, the books that I have and know you've sold and met you on, mm -hmm. it's still a concern, isn't it? Um, and, and I guess it's a smart concern because aligning brand with correct content will always be an issue. Absolutely. I mean, you know, brands don't want to be with uh, maybe nudity, uh, maybe a porn stars may not be their thing. Uh, yes, they, they still want to be in a safe environment, but still a sexy one. Mm -hmm. You know, sexy. Well, sexy is sexy. Yeah. Uh, well, the, a lot of the books in the back in the day, they would have the personal ads in the back. Yeah. Right? Oh, that was the advocate right. many, many, many years right. ago. But yeah. you wouldn't want to be, or some of the the sub of the sub brands were like that. But the brands were in the same problem with Penthouse and Playgirl or and, uh, Playboy. Mm -hmm. I remember them coming in all the time trying to sell, and it was difficult for them to get auto advertising sure. to a certain extent because people are like, eh, don't put me near the centerfold. <laughs> yeah, well, or it's a kind of maybe a, put me there because I know that I'll get looked at. Attention, yeah. depends yeah. who it is. Yeah. yeah, it's true. So, um, so how does everybody find you then? Is it very simple just to go to the glife.com um, uh, on our Facebook page, the glife uh, underscore official. Uh, same on Instagram, it's the glife uh, underscore official. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. And there's the site there. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having we appreciate, me. We appreciate it. It's an having absolute you on. pleasure to have you. I want to ask you one more question. You have yes. an accent. Where'd you grow up? L.A., born and raised. Is that an L.A. accent? E e yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds I, kind of foreign, I think. I, I've heard this before, yeah. Have everyone's you? like British, hey. New Zealand, Australia. No. The, ho uh, the, ho the classic Art Deco Hotel at the top of La Cienega. What is that called? Do you remember? On top of La Cienega. It's like a one tower. 
It's at the very. It sounds, I think it's the Tower Hotel, the, tower, the Sunset right. Tower Hotel. But it used to be this, the Argyle. They used That's to be this, what the I remember. St. James okay. Hotel or the James Hotel. Yeah, it's, I, we, I was born in Razor, so I. We did a. You know, um, we rented the Rose Bowl for an absolute shoot one time, and I woke up. I'm, I'm fresh off the plane from New York. I go to a crash at the hotel. I was at that hotel, mm-hmm. and I want my gym Equinox was down the street on yeah. sun, Sunset. Or, yeah, Sunset. I go to the concierge and I said, um, "How long of a walk is it to the Equinox?" Oh, oh, oh! Uh, he starts dialing the phone. Yeah, nobody walks nobody, in LA. And he no. says, "He goes, we have no idea." It's a song. And he said, "When you do it, let me know and I'll jot it down for future guest reference." Yeah. Like, so I got back and he goes, "How long of a walk was it?" And I said, "It was like five minutes." <laughs> I said, "You have to cross, you know." Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. you got a little gift with purchase. So this, yeah. So thank you, James Navarrete, the G Life. It's the glife.com. That's correct. Thank you. And it is the premier luxury lifestyle site for the well-grounded or well-rounded. Well-rounded. Grounded. Gay man. I've got dyslexia, so I put the G. <laughs> so I could have been well-grounded Ray man. Gay man. <laughs> and um, you're partnered, aren't you? I sure am. Are you married or just partnered? Uh, partnered. Yeah, at the time. That's another show. It, it is another show. <laughs> So we get, to, you get a pair of our famous <laughs> Thank focus group radio socks. I like to see these. these. I like to see these. These, these uh, on Thank the site. Thank you so much. You got it. <laughs> for the well-rounded yeah, game. For the yeah. well-rounded game. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We're going to take a quick James. break. When we come back, we've got a shop talk, and it's titled John: How gay should your gay bar be? Right? Is that it? That's it. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. Focus on the savvy side of 9 to 5 with the Focus Group. And in business a week, I got more money than I know what to do with. Listen, laugh, and learn with Tim and John. Herrera Rocher. Yeah. He is doing well. Stuff. He's the business manager. Welcome back to Focus Group. John Nash with my good friend and co-host, Tim Bennett. Thanks, James Navarrete from The G Life for joining us today. Check out the site at thegelife.com. Okay, so as Tim said, this article appeared in the New York Times uh, towards the end of June, typical Gay Pride Month kind of article. But the article was actually less typical than I thought and very informative, and it's called How Gay Should a Gay Bar Be? And the author actually was looking specifically at the Abbey in Los Angeles, um, West Hollywood, West right? Hollywood, and in fact, the Abbey is the focus of that E. There's a uh, E Channel show. We talked about that earlier. Um, but Tim and I, or me and Tim, have actually talked about this a number of times about the slight shift in that's happening in gay nightlife scene. We saw it a few years ago on a Jetta. We had the CarPlay Jetta trip, and we ended yeah. up in P Town. And many people were complaining about all the bachelorette parties that came through, and how that wasn't the problem. The problem was that they felt that somehow the gay bar was an accessory or a backdrop to this thing, as opposed to our place. To- it was a place for the for the ladies to go wild and 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 act a fool, mm-hmm. quite frankly, and uh, that it was going to be safe because it was a safe haven for for them without the guys oogling over them or whatever. But I, you and I saw it there. You and I saw it in Las Vegas. Yes, yep. And they're saying that uh, while there are an awful lot of people that um, are upset about the demise of the gay bar as a place of being uh, inclu- a, a place, Eating place, a, a welcome yeah. place and a safe place for, for gay men or, or women, is that it's now the, some of the bar owners are saying, listen, we wanted, we fought for equality. We wanted to be part of the whole. We wanted to be part of society. So integrating the bars is is one of the outcomes of this. Yeah. And whether you like it or not. And I, you and I have said that we don't particularly care for it. We saw it again in Las Vegas that uh, it was the same sort of thing. I used to joke, a friend of mine would say, I don't want to have to go to a bar and guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he because we would go to a bar and there'd be straight guys or whatever. Yeah. He goes, I don't want to have to go in there and guess who I'm talking to or what's going on. But the other th- issue, and I was wondering if you felt this the same way, is that some people are also blaming it on the apps. That came up in the article. Um, Grinder, and the scruff, reason, and the reason they're blaming it on the apps, uh, jacked, grinder, scruff, whatever it may be, is that the primary method with in which we would socialize and meet people was the bar right you go to a bar and you lay look the lay of the land and and the other thing is uh it's like shopping for a fishing pole in a fishing store 
perhaps a bad analogy, but you walk in and you know what's there. It's not, you're not, you don't have to question this. It was a two at 10, but he was a 10 at two. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> it's a two at 10. It's a two at 10, but he was a 10, 10 at two. two. Yeah, no, you would go in and you would assess the situation, right? And then yep. you would see what's going on and get the vibe, whether you dance, you got a drink. But now you go to any bar, and I saw this with a bunch of girls down at Rehoboth, straight girls that were out looking for guys. They were talking to me about it, that they all went out, but they were doing the same thing you see at the gay bars. If they were going to meet a guy there, maybe they were happy with him, maybe they weren't, but they were all on their phones looking to yeah. see who was nearby, who's coming over, somebody else coming close. I guess it's Tinder is the We've been out. popular site. Uh, you and I, I remember we were at that bar in Vegas, Go-Go Boys, yeah. Sexy Go-Go Boys, and every head was literally just got that iPhone. Walking around. That iPhone bend to it. And we're standing at the bar, and, and you're like... We we could give a shit about our phones because we were you know and maybe maybe six other people were doing were looking around like us and, and they were our and, age and they were, yeah they were our age you know in the article um, they they uh, interviewed uh, a woman named Gina Gata a lesbian who publishes the San Francisco based Dameron Guide it's an it's, it's a Dameron is a trusted LGBT reference for travel. Um, she noted that the bigger hit has been with lesbian bars, that they that in many cities, lesbian bars don't even exist anymore, which I just was shocked at. And she said through she did a survey uh, with Dameron and she looked at the the lay of the land and she said there's been a 15 bars per year nationwide just go away. She was she could actually get that down to the city level. But that's a, and it's since 2008 that that's happening. So the apps. The, it's a difficult business model to begin with. Yep. Um, bars are, uh, and then and then one thing about the, the that we both talked about before the show was the Abbey in particular. Now that and, and the Abbey is a cool space. Um, we had fun there. We, we we've had time. an enjoyable time there. I, you gave me the two dollar bill for the, for the, the go go, go boys, boys. Um, who was very polite. Um, Apparently, though, TMZ now runs tours, hot spots in Hollywood, and they pull up to the Abbey. And the Abbey has an outdoor seating area for the bar because it's, you know, LA, LA weather. And one guy, a, um, an entertainment lawyer who's quoted in the article, talks about how the bus pulls up and people point. Oh, look at him. Pictures. Oh, look, it's a gay having a drink at a bar. I mean, <laughs> oh, look, it's a gay. Um, so that also kind of encapsulates that whole notion of what are we like? Is this some kind of a you know, a destination spot? Is it, I don't know. I, I, when we were talking about the bars in the old days, uh, did you come to go to Uncle Charlie's here in New York? You had taken me there when we, we were in our younger days, but I was going to ask you, I guess a question along that line is if, if you had a friend visiting from out of town that said, I want to go to a gay bar, where oh, would you yeah. send them in New York? I don't even know anymore. It used to be Splash. I was, was the just going to tell bar. you, I was just going to say that if somebody had to go to a big bar, that it is was, there a such a thing anymore? There's got to be, maybe? Uh, something the, called industry or yep. something? So there are a lot of gay bars now in Hell's Kitchen. And they are, um, some are very small in scale. There's some sports bars up. But that seems to be where the gay community has kind of moved bars and clubs is to Hell Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen. But Charlie's, Uncle Charlie's, Bob and I laugh about this all the time. I th what night was Dynasty? I was like Wednesdays or something. So they had Dynasty night. They had one of those projections. They have that days. horrible neon lights in there. Oh yeah, they had, yeah, yeah. The, the, it could give you a seizure. The light, yeah. but you'd walk in and there'd be art types, Wall Street type, every type of guy. Everybody's laughing, having a good time, right? And I and that was just the randomness of that whole thing. That's the first gay bar you took me to. Yeah. And your friend Paul was with us. Yes. And I was petrified. And you had gone off. I think you might have. I don't what know who Steve you were Kimberling? with. I might have been with Steve or, or something. Was it Steve? Yes, it was Steve. Steve Kimberling, yeah. And he latched on to me. He's like, I'll show you the ropes, how, how this works. And I forget, you were wandering off somewhere with somebody. And I was nervous, and I was having my drink. And I remember the people going by, going by, going by. And I said, oh, my God, it's just like a parade in here. And he goes, and I love a parade. That was Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I and I remember laughing because I, I, oh you're God. right. It was an artsy guy. So a, you know what bar that guy, happened in? You were at Charlie's, but that happened at the boy bar um, yes. on St. Mark's Place. I remember that was, an, and you said to me, as we're going there, you were a little nervous. You're like, well, I don't know, you know, but here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to go to the gay bars. I'm like, okay. 
And yes, yeah, and Steve was with us. And, and then you disappeared. I don't know where you went. You went Probably in a back Jersey. room. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I was with Steve. And I love a parade. I love, and I said, oh, my God. He goes, what do you think? And I said, it's kind of like a parade. He goes, and I love a parade. I love Steve. But, but I want, I, I've not been out to... Um, to gay bars and you know Philadelphia I live in Philadelphia and one of my favorite bars there the Venture Inn used to just be a nice kind of neighborhood go in and have a drink sort of bar one of the oldest gay bars in the country has since closed and uh, the building got sold and you know in a lot of these neighborhoods yep. a lot of cities right yep. so um, last time the comrade and a few people were in they wanted to go out for a drink and they loved straight girls wanted to go to the gay bars and I said I don't even know where to go but let's start and we started to make the tour and um, it was disappointing because it just was not fun and yeah. we just didn't. You know, it begs the question and, and the article that we were citing, which was a New York Times article, by the way, and, it, and, it, and it's a good read. Um, it is a good read. It came out in June. Um, this could possibly be um, an age issue as well yeah. and a generational issue because a lot of the, um, the younger uh, LGBT uh, people kind of view this as this is how they grew up right they they their friends are mixed straight and gay right. and and there was so, there was portrayals on tv and and it wasn't a sin to be necessarily gay or uh lgbt it was it's more accepting now than it used to be yeah i personally tim I and i it. we talk about this a lot i miss the coded stuff i miss the references to movies you had to know i miss the wink wink we're going to bb yeah the, the exploration bar. the exploration of it yeah. and the, the curiousness of it and who you never knew who you'd run into mm -hmm. sort of thing but uh what was a good article and, and i think that uh a lot of depending on your age like you know that's the other thing like we aged out of going to bars to find people and to meet because as you become more responsible at work as you gain it, it depends on your career <laughs> you can't stay out till four and get up and be <laughs> well, in at seven thirty. you know that was the thing tim's describing when he came to new york and i would take him to these bars he's describing uh stuff that we did in our 20s oh. and you could go out all night and god bless or ride a tater tots because for some reason they magically absorb the alcohol and you were good to go <laughs> just get home and get a little get a little spritz on and put your suit on and go to work. go to work and you really didn't care if you did your job because you weren't making a fortune you weren't a big decision maker right but as you climb the ladder as you start businesses if you're freelancing the responsibility seems to shift that that nightlife. Well, even now, though, if if you were single now, you probably it, it's online, right? I mean, that, chances maybe at a book club, maybe at a sporting thing that you you're cycling, you might meet yeah. somebody. But generally now, that's how people people meet, which was frowned you. upon ten years, years ago. ago. Yeah, I, I'm happy to say that I have a, a good friend named Alex, um, and Alex is in his late his late, mid to late twenties, and uh, he met his boyfriend, who's really fantastic, the old fashioned way. He met him at a bar. <laughs> they, and start, they talked. And they started to talk, and they had a fun conversation. And now they're together. And in fact, Alex will tell you that he does not. He, he's not even a technology guy. I don't even know what iPhone he's on. But I always thought he was like getting the newest apps or a pain, just pain to upgrade. You know, I meet him. Yeah, <laughs> you'd love Alex. He's great. So, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today on the Focus Group. Thank you, John. Thanks to uh, James Navarrete. Go to thegelife.com to learn more about his site. Thanks to uh, Allie and to John and to Garrett, our producers here on the Focus Group. Thanks to our sponsor, Deep Discount. Be sure to go to focusgroupradio.com and learn uh, more about Deep Discount and all the thousands, I, pro I would say hundreds of thousands of items, tens of thousands of items. I'm not gonna say it's infinite. It's almost, uh, you it's can't close. look at it all. It would take you over a year. <laughs> To look at it all, not just from CDs and DVDs, but also uh, all the other accessories and items that they have. But do it through focusgroupradio.com. A big thank you to our partner here on the Focus Group as well, Volkswagen of America. John and I are thinking about the fact that we're going into our eighth year with Volkswagen. And uh, they've been supporting uh, our show for a number of years. And without them, we wouldn't be able to join each week. So we appreciate uh, all they've done for us. Go to VW.com and check out some of the new SUVs they have, particularly the Atlas and soon to be Tiguan. Everyone have a great week and don't text and drive. Arrive alive. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Arrive alive, Arrive don't alive. text Arrive alive. <laughs> <laughs>
formerly on Sirius XM Satellite Radio and now accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com.